Okay guys, so today we are going to build a bike rental website and when I say bike, I mean all sorts of bikes. It could be motorbike, e-bikes or even bicycles if you wanted to. So we are going to cover all the steps one by one from start to finish and by the end of this tutorial, you'll end up with a beautiful website like this one with an eye-catching slider to grab your visitors attention straight from the start, a quick inventory list of available bikes, a rental section where you can display all the features and details related to your bikes with beautiful pictures and a nice slider effect as well to go from one page to the other and when you hover on top of the image it will reveal a rent now button and when you click on it it will bring you directly to the product page from where you can book the bike watch a video see all the relevant details including a price by the hour and by day a calendar and of course, the booking form itself, where you can select a pickup location, a drop-off location, a pickup date and time, a drop-off date and time, and even some extra options as well. So very, very exciting indeed. So let's dive right into it. Okay guys, so as always, the very first step is to take care of our hosting. So for this, you can go onto my website, mrwebreviews.com and click on this link here in the menu section that says hosting or you can click on the very first link in the description below. Both of these links will bring you to the same place. So let's click on that link and this will bring us to the Hostinger website. And this is a co-branded page that I have with Hostinger which means that I have negotiated special terms for you guys and they are providing us with up to 85% discount on their main hosting packages. Now, having said that, Hostinger is one of the best hosting companies out there because they offer extremely competitive prices, as you can see here, but they are also extremely reliable and they offer round-the-clock customer support and this to me is super important when it comes down to hosting your website. Now, as you can see by using this link in the description below, this will give you access to up to 85% discount. So this is absolutely amazing, isn't it? So let's have a look at our three different plans here. So we have the single, premium and business. So the premium one is the most popular one and you will understand very quickly why. So let me tell you what's the difference between the single, the premium and the business. So let's start with the single plan here. And as you can glean from its name, for one website only so if you are planning to create more than one project on this server this might not be the right choice for you and also bear in mind you can only have one email account so basically if you have a website your your domain name.com you can only have one email attached to it so maybe info at or hello at sales at accounts at you can only have one email account attached to it Whereas this package here, the premium one, it is unlimited emails and up to 100 websites. So this already is a better added value, as you can see, for just basically maybe a dollar extra. Now, something else that more advantages with the premium one compared to the single one is that with this one, you get a free domain name registration as well, which is worth $8.99. So you don't get this with the single one, but you get the free domain with the premium one. And also as well, you don't get the Google Ads credit. So you get some credits as well to run ads using Google AdWords. And you can have this, it's free actually. It, this comes with this plan as well with the premium and it doesn't come with the single plan. Now, another great thing with hosting is that they provide free SSL certificate with all their plans. So regardless, if you take the single one, premium one or the business one, you will get free SSL certificate with all your websites. And the SSL certificate is very important. So this is basically the padlock here next to your web address in your web browser. And this will tell your visitors that your website is safe and secure. And this is very important, especially in this case, because you're going to process payments online. And then we have the business package, which is basically a bigger version of the premium plan. So let's go ahead with this one here, because by definition, it is clearly the most popular one and the most advantageous, as we've just shown. So let's go with this. And from here, we'll have to select our billing cycle. Now, the longer the billing cycle, the cheaper it gets. As you can see, we go from $10.29 right down to $2.59. So you can select a month, 12 months, 24 months, and 48 months. 
So basically, this is really up to you. So let me show you the different options. So if you're not too sure, you just want to try things out. Maybe you want to go for one month. This is fine. This will cost you ten dollars twenty-nine for one month. But bear in mind that you still have to pay the set of fee, which is four dollars ninety-nine. So if we scroll down the page, as you can see, the total will come up to right up to eighteen dollars seventy-nine. So this is for just one month. So it will. This will be obviously uh, renewed at the end of the month. So it can become quite expensive. Now, if we select twelve months, then the total cost would be seventy-one dollars and eighty-eight cents. And on this one, you save forty-one percent. So basically, you're saving fifty-one dollars and sixty cents. So if we scroll down here, you can see that the normal cost would be one hundred and twenty-three dollars, and it will only cost you eighty-eight dollars. So a good bit of savings to be made here. So seventy-one dollars. So let's say if you wanted to go for twenty-four months, so this is double this period. So normally you would just assume that seventy times two, maybe one hundred forty dollars, it would cost you. Look at this; it's only ninety-five dollars. So here you save a humongous amount, one hundred fifty-one dollars of savings. So what if you wanted to go for four years now, forty-eight months? So ninety-five dollars. So let's say ninety times two, one hundred eighty dollars. So how would this cost you? One hundred twenty-four dollars only. So imagine here we're saving three hundred and sixty-nine dollars. So imagine this: for four years, you're only paying one hundred and twenty-four dollars. So then you select your uh, card payment, uh, whichever you have available. So it could be uh, by card, PayPal, coin payments. So these were these were all the um, virtual currencies like uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum and all them, and you have Google Pay as well. So let's scroll down the page now, and I'm going to give you a coupon code now. So as you can see at the moment, it would normally cost you almost five hundred dollars for two four years. You save three hundred and sixty nine dollars, which is seventy four percent discount. So the total would be about one hundred and fifty two dollars. Now I have a coupon code right here. Type in Mister Web Reviews, all in capital letters, just like this, and then click the plus sign. And bear with me now. So now you save an additional five percent. So instead of one fifty-two, it's only one hundred forty-one. So imagine this for four years, one hundred and forty dollars. So this is just amazing. Now again, feel free to set any of those pl uh, plans and uh, packages here. Feel free to choose any of them. But I think the best value is the four years. So let's go with this and click submit. Set your payment. And now, as you can see, I'm redirected to the PayPal payment page because I selected PayPal. But whichever method you've selected, just go through the checkout process and click next. And once you've gone through the whole checkout process, you will receive a couple of emails with confirmation, etc. And then you can go back to hosting and then you can log in into your account. So just click log in. Then you enter your credentials on so your email address and password. And our first step is to claim our free domain. Because we get a free domain with this plan and package, which is very nice indeed. So let's take advantage of that. So let's claim our free domain. So click on this, and here you're going to just type in the domain you'd like to register. So for instance, bike rental, and an extension. So it could be .com, it could be anything here available. You have .online, .sub, .tech, .site, .xyz. So feel free to select any of these options. Maybe .info, .net. Now the most popular one, obviously, is .com. So, because it is the most popular one, it might not be available as well. So, you might have to go through a few different options, a few different variations. So, you just type in your domain name here. So, for instance, bike rental. Now, again, because it's a .com, it's very popular. Bike rental is very likely to be taken already. So, you can look for different variations. So, let's say you're based in Dallas in the U.S. Maybe you look for bike rental Dallas. And if this is taken already, maybe you can type in. Dallas bike rental and so on. So I'll try a few different variations. And once you're happy enough with the domain name that you found, so let's say bike rental in Dallas, click claim domain and go to the next step. And once you have your domain name registered, we can go to the next step, which is to set up our hosting. So as you can see here, we have premium shared hosting setup. So I'll click on this one here, and then from here we're going to click on start new. We're going to skip this step all together. So skip. Same with this one. We're going to skip this because we're going to start from scratch. So skip. 
And now you're going to select the domain name you just registered. So here we can see we have Best London Plumber, but here normally you would have Dallas Bike Rental or Bike Rental in Dallas on whichever domain name we just registered. So select this one and then click Finish Setup. And once you've gone through the whole setup process, you will have an additional section like this one that says Hosting. And from here, we can manage our hosting. So let's click on this. Now, if you registered more than one domain name, you might want to check here that you selected the right one. So we're going to work on the MrWebReviews.com website. So I'm just clicking on this. So make sure you selected the right one. And then we're going to scroll down the page. So as you can see, with all those different options here, we have WordPress, order, account, emails, domain, website, files, database, advanced, and other. There's a lot here, but don't worry. We're only going to use a few features here. So on the first step, we're going to set up an email address for your website. And for this, we're just going to go to email, click on email accounts. So as you can see, I have different websites here hosted on this server, but let's say you only have one or maybe just the one you want. Just make sure you select the right one. So at mrwebreviews.com. So I'm just going to select this and so select the one you want, basically. And from here, we can create a new email. So basically click on this or this icon here. So add email account. And right here, type the email name that you want. So it could be info at hello at account at or whatever, you know. And then basically type it here and then create a password. Click create. And just like that, we have an email account created. And now if we go back to our hosting account, again, make sure you have the right domain name selected here. If you scroll down the page, we're going to go into website and then we're going to select auto installer. So we're going to install WordPress basically now. So you're going to select this section here. So select this, click on that, WordPress. And our first step is to select HTTPS. So basically this is to activate the SSL certificate and show that our website is secure. So to have this padlock here, we need an HTTPS at the front of our uh, web address and just make sure that this section is empty as you can see it says wordpress but it's actually a blank field if you hit the delete key you will see there's nothing there so make sure this is this remains blank and then we need an admin username so here you can type in for example your name or whichever you want and then we need to type in an administrator username so admin username so it could be anything so type something that's difficult and hard to guess so it could be your name or maybe something else. And just create a password here. So I'm just going to select this one for now. And then make sure that your email address is correct because this is where you're going to receive all the notifications from your website. And then we need to type a website title. So let's give it a name, maybe Dallas Bike Rental, language English, or whichever language you, uh, you're speaking. So everything else, you can just leave the same, just everything by default here and just tick this box here. Just make sure that it says always update to the latest available version and then click install. And now it will do its thing. It will start installing WordPress on our server. And once the installation is completed, you'll be redirected to the screen. So bear in mind that there is no notification that the installation is completed. Basically, you'll be redirected to the screen, and that means that WordPress is installed on your server. And then from here, we're going to go to Dashboard. Okay, Dashboard, once more. And then from here, just make sure the false HTTPS toggle switch is switched on. If it's not, just make sure you switch it on, and you'll get a notification that here that says successfully forced HTTPS. And now we're going to access our WordPress dashboard. So click on Edit Website. And it will open a new window. And then you will get this message here. Welcome to the all-in-one SEO setup wizard. Just skip that all together because we are not going to use it at all. So welcome to our WordPress dashboard. So from here, the first step is to do a bit of cleaning up. So we're going to go into plugins. And we're going to select them all, bulk select, and then deactivate, apply. And now we're going to do the same, bulk select. And then delete, apply. And let's delete all of this because we're not going to need any of them. We're going to install our own plugins and all theme. So this is one thing done. So if you want to, you can refresh. And as you can see, we have no plugins installed anymore. So we have fresh new installation. So let's have a quick look at our website. So if you hover on top of the title here, you have visit site. If you right click on it, open in a new tab. 
just like this. So as you can see, it's very basic at the moment. This is the default template that comes with uh, WordPress. Uh, this is called the 2021 templates. So very basic again, as I said. So what we're going to do now is to install our branded templates, something that looks absolutely amazing, like I showed you in the intro of this tutorial. And for this, we're going to go to the Envato Marketplace. So I'll leave the link in the description below. And we are going to use this WordPress theme. So it's called iRecca. So basically, this is a theme plus booking system two in one. So it's a full complete system. And this comes at a small cost of only $59. And you can use this theme for boat rental, bike rental, vehicle rental, literally anything you want. So whether you are setting this up for yourself as a business or creating a website for your clients, you can clearly understand that $59 US dollars is a very, very small investment indeed. And with this specific theme, there are two ways to access it and purchase it. So you can buy it from the themeforest.net website. So again, I'll leave a link in the description below and you can buy this for $59 US dollars. Or you can buy this from the Envato Elements Place. So let me open this in a new tab. So if you wanted to purchase this from the Envato Elements, you will have access to millions of creative assets for just a small cost of €14.50 Euros per month. So depending where you're located in the world, I'm based in Ireland myself and the price is €14.50. Euros. Now in US dollars, it might be $16 dollars or something like this. So it's very, very small cost per month. And this will give you access to millions of digital assets like graphic templates, video templates, stock photo, music tracks, web templates, and much more. So if you were to look into web templates alone, you have access to almost 3,500 web templates all together. And you can actually download any of these and use them to create websites, etc., etc., readily available and all that for a small tiny cost of 1450 per month and also if you use the envato elements any of those themes that you will be using here if you open them all these pictures used to create this website will also be available to you at no extra cost and now that we have purchased our theme we can install it on our wordpress website so we're going to appearance themes click add new and from here, upload themes. And then we're going to select the file that we downloaded from the Envato Marketplace. Choose file. And the file you've downloaded from the Envato Marketplace will look something like this. So this is an archive file. So you might have to extract it first before you can install it. Once you have extracted it, it will recreate a few folders like this, including those two files. And this is the file that we need, ireka.zip. So select this file here, click open and then click install now so as you can see it says unpacking the package now it's installing the theme so it's just going to take a few moments so there you go now it is installed and all we have to do is just to click activate and now we have our theme installed and as you can see our new theme has been installed and activated so we have a message here on top of our page that says that this theme requires the following plugins so all of these plugins are required now so we'll have to run the installation so let's click on begin installing plugins and they're all listed here so what we're going to do is to bulk select them just like this here on top and then select install from the drop down menu and click apply and now it's going to start installing all these 12 required plugins so this might take a little while so please be patient and there you go, all installed. Now, as you can see, 12 out of 12. And now we can return to the required plugins installer. So we have one more step to complete. And from here, we're going to bulk select them all once more. And in the drop down menu, select activate and then click apply. And there you go. As you can see, all our plugins are now installed and activated. And now let's go back to our theme section. And we're getting this message now. So wherever you're going to click, it will bring you to this page. So this is to set up a WooCommerce. So we're going to skip this for now. We're going to take care of this later. So skip setup store and then click no thanks. And then close up this window. And then from here, we're going to go back into appearance themes. And this is our theme. So hover on top and click on theme details. And now we're going to click on this button here at the bottom. 
import demo data. So click on this, and for me, I just scroll down the page and click on this button here, import demo data. And then we're gonna click next, continue and import. So we not, don't need any of these, just go ahead with this here. So this is gonna take a few moments, maybe up to two minutes, so please be patient. This is normal, it's doing its thing. It says here, please sit tight while we import your content. Do not refresh the page or hit the back button, so just be careful, that's all really. And there you go, once it's imported, you will receive a confirmation message like this that tells you that the import is complete. So let's have a quick look at our website. So this is what our website used to look like. So let's have a quick refresh and let's discover what it looks like now. So as you can see, everything is there, almost everything is there except the sliders. Those two sliders are not visible yet. So we're gonna tweak this around anyways. I'm gonna show you how to do everything. So if you scroll on the page, as you can see, it looks already very professional indeed. So let's go and tweak this page and the website. Now, to get a better feel of what our website looks like, we're gonna import the slider first. And for this, we're gonna go back to our WordPress dashboard, scroll down the menu section here, we're going to slider revolution, and then click on manual import. And then let's select our files. And for this, we're gonna go into our demo import section. So I'm going to demo import, and as you can see, we have slideshow, open this folder, and then you have those one, two, three, four, five different files. So select them all and let's import them. So click open. And then it's gonna import the five different sliders from the five different demos. And now that we have them imported, we can go to our web page and then refresh. And as you can see, now we have our demo, complete demo imported, including slider. And you can, you can scroll from one to the other, and you have that lovely effect as well with different elements coming in. And I'm going to show you how you can change this as well and make it your own. But as you can see at the moment, this is a car rental website, and what we want is a bike, motorbike rental. So for this, we're gonna go back to our WordPress dashboard. We're going to settings, and then from here we have reading. Click on this. And where you see home page here, we have home car at the moment. So what we want is to save the next one, which is home motorbike. So click on this, click save. And now if we go back to our website and we refresh, you can see that now it is a bike rental website. And if we scroll down the page, as you can see, it looks absolutely fantastic and beautiful indeed. So let's go and make some changes. The first section I'm going to show you how to change is this uh, slider. And for this, we go back to our slider resolution. And we're going to select our slider, which is this one here. So I'll click on the small pencil to edit. There you go. And from here, we have all the options to change our slider. And the first thing I'm going to show you is how to change this background picture. Now, don't get me wrong, it looks absolutely great but this is your website and you, you might want to change the picture obviously to make it your own. So how do you go about this? We're going to slide background animation and you can see this icon here, click on this and it will reveal the sources. Now we're going to media library and then upload file, select file and select your new picture and then open, now insert and just like that we have our new picture. So every step of the way, you might want to save your work. So click save and let's have a sneak peek. Let's refresh this now. And as you can see, we have a new picture. It looks very professional, doesn't it? Beautiful. So let me show you how to change all the content here. So let's do that together now. And then let's take care mainly of our prices here and maybe the type of bike. So let's go back to our uh, slider here. So we're gonna click on this section here. Just click on it and it will reveal all this HTML coding here. So it might look a bit confusing if you're not used to it, but it's very simple, let me show you. You can see we have all these text here, so only from, we have the dollar and the amount here. And all you have to do basically is to change this text uh, in between the HTML tags. So let's say your rental price per hour is not 59, but maybe it's $45 or maybe you're working not in dollars but in pounds or euros and you can change the currency here as well. So if we save now and we have a quick preview, as you can see now it reveals a different set of 
instructions. So now we have only from pound 45 per hour. And if you wanted to change the model here, the main heading, you click on this. And instead of that, you can maybe put Ninja 1000 SX. And then you can save. And you can do the same with the text here underneath. Put whatever you want. Or you can delete it all together if you don't want it. You can right click on it and click delete if you wanted to get rid of it. And then we have a button here that says view details. So we cannot link this at the moment because we haven't created any products yet. So once we've taken care of that, we can come back here and then link it to the page. But regardless, I'm going to show you now how to do it. So if you go back to our website and we look at all these different bikes, so let's say you wanted to link it to this page, rental page. As you can see, this is where you can rent uh, this bike. So from here, you're going to select the web address. Right click on it, copy, go back here. And now for this button, we're going to add an action. So click on this. And this is a simple link. So click on that. And as you can see, if you click on this link, what do you want to happen? You want to open the link. So this is where we put the URL. And then all we have to do after this is to close this window and then click save. And now if we go back to our home page and refresh. Now if we click on this button, it will bring us immediately to the booking page. So let's customize everything else from our website from a layout point of view. So let's customize the theme. And for this, we're going to go to our WordPress dashboard, go to Appearance, Customize. Okay, and from here we have all these different options here on the left hand side. So let's go through all the important ones. So let's take care of our header. So we're going to change our phone number. We're going to change our logo here as well. So let's change this first, the contact details. And this is a widget. So we're going to widget, click on this. And then you can see we have the header to left logo. So this is on the left. So this is what it is. So if you open this, you can see this is a custom HTML content. And now you can change the content from here. So maybe instead of mobile phone, you want it to say contact us. So just change the content here. And you can do the same with the phone number here. Just type in your phone number. And when you're finished, don't forget to click publish. And for our logo, we have to go to a different place. So back to our WordPress dashboard here. You're going to go into pages. So all pages, display all the pages. And you're going to locate the home page. So if you scroll down, you can see we have all these different home pages, and the one you, we're using is, is the home motorbike. So just click on the title here itself, click on that, and this will open our page. And if you scroll down, you can see we have all the different details here. So it's really up to you. You can have them by pages like it is here. So on each and every page, you'll have a different logo. Or you can set this as a global setting as well. So if you go back up here on top, if you go to Head Global and then uh, Global Settings, you can set the logo here. So you can import it here immediately or you can configure it per page. So if we delete from here, just delete this in there. If we save the page now, and then if we refresh from here, we refresh. This is our home page. There is no logo here. As you can see, it is gone now. It's displaying the site name. And then we can set this up as a default global setting. So for all the pages, basically. So that's really up to you. You can define it per page or globally. So if it's globally, just add logo here. So let's upload a file now. So let's select a file. So I found this one online, which might be absolutely fine for our purpose here. And then choose image. And as you can see, now it is displaying our new logo. And we can do the same for mobile devices. So I'll select the logo once more, choose image. And as always, don't forget to click publish. And if you have a quick look at our website now, and if we refresh, we have our new logo displaying right on top. So it looks very nice, doesn't it? So now again, let's go back to our page here. You can see that we have the general settings here, and these will override basically the global settings. So we have our global settings right here, or you can have specific settings per page. So what I would reckon is probably to have global settings, which is much easier. So maybe you can remove all of these and set them as global in customizer, global in customizer, and then save your home page and just leave it as is. Because this way, every changes you're going to make from this section here, from all these items, 
will reflect automatically on your front page and it's much easier to configure. So let's go and configure our global settings for our header. So header global and then global settings. And then we're going to select version 2. So click on this. And this is basically our header like we had it. But now it is set up globally. So click publish. And now that we've taken care of our header, we can do the same with our footer photo section right here. So we can change this and make it global. So we go back here, back again, and go into footer global. And as you can see by default, this is what it looks like. But we also have maybe the version 2. Maybe you prefer version 2, which is more colorful. Maybe this is really a matter of choice. Or you can have version 1. So let's go with version 1 for now. And let's click Publish. And then next, we're going to set up our rental listing settings. So we're going to back here. And we're going to rental list. And then we're going to go into our general settings right here. So this is for our list product list page. So basically, if you're going to rental a motorbike, open this page. So by default, we have two columns and the sidebar. So like we have here, two columns with sidebar. But you can select three columns, no sidebar. So as you can see, this is a different layout, which I think personally is very nice. And then you can select another one, maybe style one with sidebar, so just one column. Then you have to style two, which is slightly different with all the information overlapping here on top. And then you have style three. And this looks very professional as well with all the details immediately here. So it's just a matter of preferences. So myself, I would select three columns with no sidebar. I think this looks very nice, very appealing indeed. So let's go with this for now. But again, it's a matter of taste and preferences. So feel free to select the one that you prefer. And now we go back to our main menu and we go into the search settings this time. And as you can see with all the different features here. So this is our search settings right here. And basically everything that's displayed on this page can be configured from this menu section. So as you can see, we can define how many items we want to show. So do you want to show the search bar here or not? So if you say no, it will be hidden. And if you say yes, it will show up. So basically, normally you should keep it. It would make more sense. So do you want to show the pickup location and the drop-off location? So let's say you only have pickup location. You don't want the drop-off location. So you can hide this, for instance, so no. And you can see now we only have pickup location and pickup date. So that's really up to you. You can, you can tweak this around to fit your own uh, purposes and requirements, of course. So, for instance, here in the case of our rental website, you might not need the steering and gearbox and auto park because this is related to cars. So maybe you can hide this one. Click no for this one, no for gearbox, and no for auto park. And this would make a lot more sense. And maybe you don't even need the manufacturers here, so you can hide this as well. And this makes full sense now for a rental company. And as always, once you're happy enough, click Publish. And now we're going to configure our detail rental settings. So back to our main menu here. And this time we're going to Rental Detail. And we're going to Style Template first. And for us to be able to preview our work, we're going to change page. So we're going to go into Style 1 here. So Rental Detail Style 1. So basically from here, you can treat everything from your page. So for instance, if you want to show the booking button right here, if you want to show the video, if you want to show the price. So let's say if you want to hide the price here, you're going to show price and click no. And now the price is not showing anymore. So it's really up to you. You can tweak this around again to fit your own preferences and taste. So for instance, if we scroll down the page, you can see the table price by day. So if we click on this, it's a toggle switch. It will open up. But maybe you want to display that part of the page constantly, in which case you're going to table price, show yes, but always open table price, yes. In which case, every time someone's going to land on this page, they will see this automatically, which is very helpful if you think of it. But again, it's just a matter of preferences and matter of taste. So it's really up to you to set it up based on your own requirements. And this works for all the sections of this page. So basically, do you want to show the calendar here? So basically, when the days are fully booked, they'll go in different colors. As you can see, rent full day, 
or by the hour. So you will see what's available or not available. Do you want to show the booking form, which is here underneath? And do you want to show a request form as well? So basically, if you scroll down here, you see you have description, request for booking. So someone can click on this and request a specific custom quote based on what they need. And maybe they have specific requirements, in which case they're not going to go through the whole rental process immediately. They're going to request a quote. So this is what this is for. So do you want to show this or not? It's really up to you again. You can set this up based on your own requirements. So next step is to set up our calendar. So let's go back to the main menu here. And then we're going to click on calendar here. And from here, this is where you're going to insert all your time slots. So basically all the hours. And you have them separated with a comma. And then you can exclude some days. So for instance, if the offices are closed on Sunday, you can add zero for Sunday. And maybe six for Saturdays as well. Maybe you're not open during the weekend. So this would be 0, 0,6, but maybe you only close on the Sunday and you open on Saturdays, in which case you only insert a 0. And when you're done, as always, click Publish. And next, we configure our location settings. So for this, we're going to Locations right here. So basically, this section here is to allow the use of pickup and drop-off location to validate booking and search uh, results as well. So basically, this should be set to yes for this to work. Now, let's configure our Google API settings. So we have to set up a key. So we're going to Google API settings. And all we need, basically, is an API key to allow us to display the Google Maps on our website with the different locations. And for this, we're going to go to developers.google.com forward slash maps. So I'll leave that in the uh, comment section below. And then you click Get Started. And then here again, get started. So it's going to open up a new window. And from here, you're going to click create project. And you're going to give it a name. So let's call it bike rental. And let's click create. And then we get a notification that says that the project was created. So I'm happy enough with this. And now we need to enable the Google Maps platform. So we have to create a project, set up your billing, and pick product. So don't worry about the billing. There's a certain amount of free uh, API access, so this is not going to cost you anything. So let's put, let's give it a name. So let's call it Bike Rental, and I'm going to say API Bike Rental API. So create. Okay, there you go. And from here, you have to select a billing account. So basically, click on the drop-down menu and select My Billing Account, and then set account. Okay. And what we need, basically, is maps. That's all we need, maps. That's all we need, really. But just to be on the safe side, click Routes and Places as well. And then click Next. And then we have to go through all these different options here. So select from the list. So uh, what is your primary goal for signing up to Google Maps? So let's click Others. So continue. Which of the following industries are you in? So I just click anything, maybe. Select which industry you're in. So here are the most popular case of industries. Okay, fair enough. So let's say I don't know. Okay, continue. And the size of your company. So let's select I am self-employed maybe, whichever it is. And click Submit. So now Enable. Very good. Now here is our API key. So click on this to copy it. We go back to our website and we start it here and click Publish. And that back to our Google Maps platform, just confirm here and click done. Just make sure you have it copied and pasted paste before you do that. So back to our website now. Now let's set up our booking system. So we're going to set up WooCommerce and create new categories and new bikes and insert that on our website. And then after that, we'll take care of everything that's got to do with design and layout. So let's go ahead with this now. So let's go and set up WooCommerce first. So we're going to WooCommerce and then Settings. And from here, we're going to fill out our details here first. So we're going to type our address and details. So basically like this, you put in your address. And then you can select your selling location. So you can sell to all countries or maybe specific countries. In which case, you're going to enter the countries you're selling to. So maybe you're selling only to the United States, the US. In which case, you just select US. But maybe you do US and Mexico, and 
Canada, let's say you have different locations, and then you have the shipping location and default customer location. So you just keep that by default. And then if you want to enable taxes, if you are VAT registered, you can tick this box as well. And then if you want to enable coupons, tick this one as well. And finally, you can select your currency. So you can select among US, US dollars, or maybe you're trading in euros, or maybe in pounds, whichever it is, you can select your currency here. And as always, when you're done, don't forget to click save. And that's just done for the first section. Now let's go into our product section. So from here, make sure that you select the shop page here. So we have a drop down menu. So make sure you select this one here, shop. You have to select the redirect to the cart page after successful addition. So check this box. This one as well, enable Ajax add to cart button on archive. And then we're going to scroll down the page and going to email, enable all of these here. So we have enable product review, show verified owners and review can only be left by verified owners and those two here. Once you're done, click save. And now if you enable the taxes, we can set up our taxes as well. So this is all tax related. So how are you going to display your prices? Inclusive of tax or exclusive of tax? So if you're selling wholesale to uh, businesses, it probably be exclusive of tax. Now, if you're selling to the public, most likely it is inclusive of tax. So I would select this one in the case of renting bikes. And then how do you calculate the tax? So as you can see, we have three options here, customer shipping address, customer billing address, and shop base address. Again, if they go and collect the bike at a certain location, it's most likely to be shop base address. So shipping class doesn't apply to us because they come and collect uh, the bikes at certain locations. And then we have display price in the shop. So excluding of tax or including tax, so it should be included tax normally. And the same for this one here. And then click save. So now we are going to set up our rates. So click on standard rates. And from here, you're going to install a row and put the country code. So this applies to the country where the bike is and the shop is located, where you're going to come and collect it from. So let's say you're based in the US. So this is your code. Click US and then select it. And then you can go by state code as well. If you have different uh, VAT rates depending on the state, you can change this and break it down into different states and even down to zip codes. So let's keep it general now for the whole of the US, for instance. And the rate would be, for instance, 10%. I'm not too sure if that's correct, but I think that's what it is at the moment in the USA. And then let's give it a name. So US VAT 10% and then click save. And then again, depending on where you are located in the world, you might have reduced rate as well, which can apply maybe in, in the rental industry and so on. So check with your accountant and make sure this is set up properly. And then we have the shipping section, which doesn't apply to us in this case because they come and collect the bikes from different locations. And then we have the payment, which is the most important section. So as you can see, by default, we have four different payment methods. So we have direct bank transfer, check payment, cash on delivery, and PayPal standard. So for instance, cash on delivery means that when they get to your location, they will pay you on site, which might be a good option for you here, unless you want to have a prepayment beforehand just to secure the sale and the rental, in which case you might want to enable PayPal payments. So click on this. So let's say you have a PayPal account and you're fine with this. So click on that, enable it, and then you have to set it up. So basically with PayPal, it's very simple. All you need is one email address. So just copy and paste or type in your email address here and just scroll down the page and just click save. And that's basically it. That's all done already. And then you can go back to your payment settings. Now let's say you're getting paid by Stripe, Klarna, Google Pay, Amazon Pay, or any of those other providers or other payment gateway. So let me show you how you can install and add additional payment gateways here. And for this, we're going to go back to our WordPress dashboard. We're going to plugins. And then we're going to add new. And in the search box, type in WooCommerce and then the name of your payment platform. So it could be Stripe, for instance, Stripe for WooCommerce. And as you can see, we have a few different options for Stripe alone. Now, if you're offered with different options, like this one, we have three of them at least here on the screen already. So we have one, two, three already for Stripe. So how do you know which one to select? Well, you can go simply by the amount of active installations. As you can see, this one is 
more than 800,000 plus installations. So this is a good sign that this is a reliable plugin. So we're going to install this one, and then we're going to activate it. There you go. And now if we go back to our payment page and refresh this page, as you can see, now we have all these different options here from Stripe. And then you can feel free to enable any of those payment methods. So maybe you want to get paid by Ideal, maybe by P24, Multibanco, Bank Contact, and so on. So feel free to enable any of these and to set them up uh, according to your own uh, requirements. And then our next step is to set up our emails here. So basically, we're going to personalize our emails. So this is where all the emails are located. You know, all the communications between you and the buyer. So you have the new orders. Uh, cancelled orders, confirmation, reset password, etc. And right here at the bottom, you can put your name. So basically, every email you're going to receive, every confirmation email will have your name. So make sure that your name is properly inserted here, that your email address is correct as well. And then if you scroll down, you can see we have two different color choices here. So basically, when they're going to receive an email, you can customize this to have the same color as your company logo. So let's say your company uses red mainly, so you could go and change this and go into a red color and then select the red that fits uh, your own personal branding and then click save change and that's it. And then our final settings for WooCommerce, we're going to advanced. And from here, this is the section we need to take care of. So make sure that the cart checkout and my account page are selected properly. So if you don't have anything here that's pre-filled automatically, you can select the drop-down menu, type in the first letters, for instance, cart, and select this page. As you can see, there's only one showing up anyway, so this is the one you need to select, and do the same with the other two pages here. So that's it. That's, that's all done for the WooCommerce settings. Now let's go and configure our products, categories, type, and location. So for this, we're going to products, and we're going to say categories. And from here, you can see we have all these that are created from our demo content. So I'm going to show you how to create your own categories now. So enter a name, for instance, category could be motorbike. The slug would be motorbike as well. And we don't have any parent category at the moment. So this is our main category. And what is it? Is it rental or shop? So are you going to sell or rent? So this one is a rental. And in this data, you can say products, subcategories, or both. I would leave it by default. And then you can add a thumbnail image. So basically, if you go into category itself, this is the picture that will display here in the background. So let's go and upload an image. Then we can select this one that we had earlier. Use image. And then we can click add new category. Now, if we scroll back up, as you can see, our main category is added. And then we can create our different types. So let's click on type here. So basically here, it's the subcategory if you wish. So you could have sports bike, touring bike, cruisers, scooters, etc. So let's create one together now. So as you can see, we already have an existing section and subcategories here. So we have the motorbikes that we just created and a few subcategories. So let's create another one together. So let's go into the sport bikes. And then the parent category will be motorbikes. And we can add an image. So let's select this one here select so this image is quite important because this is the one that will be shown here in the background on your page and let's click add new and just like this we have a new subsection so next we have to set up our location so let's click on this and as you can see with all of these inserted already from our demo so now again depending on where you are located in the world you probably have to plug, delete all of these and create new ones. Or if you are already in the United States, you can keep these and add those uh, closer to you. And for this, simply click on Add New Location. So add a title. So basically the title is your location, maybe San Francisco. Click Publish. And now if we go back to our locations, you will see that San Francisco has been added to our locations as well. And now we're going to take care of our vehicle IDs. So click on Manage ID Vehicle. And as you can see, these are supposed to be our number plates or red numbers. And for this, let's click on Add New ID Vehicle. So what is the vehicle ID? So here you can put a title for so maybe Mercedes E-Class. And then you give it an ID. So this is the red number, basically, you know. 
so the number page. So this has to be unique, so depending on where you locate it again, or it could be something else. So maybe it is a sequence of numbers and uh, digits. So let's go with this. And then where is this vehicle located? So we have all these different locations. So maybe it is based in San Francisco. And then we're going to put an address, and you will find it automatically on Google Maps. So let's type an address here, maybe 801 Montgomery Street in San Francisco. So let's select this. And as you can see, this is our location on the map. And then you can set an unavailable time for this vehicle. So let's say maybe it is sent for service, and then it's out for service for a few days. Then you can select the start date, for instance, maybe next week, it'll be out of service from 9 a.m. Let's say you're going to book this in and then you're going to go and collect it maybe the next day, maybe at 5 p.m. So you can select this from here very easily. And then this way, it will not they will not be able to basically book this car during this period of time. And as always, once it's done, you could publish. And if you go back to all ID vehicles, you can see now we have the Mercedes E-Class with our specific registration number. And now let me show you how you can create a new vehicle for rental, so a new bike. So for this, we're going to products and all products. So I'm going to show you an existing one first. So these are all the products that were imported. So let's click on this one, for instance. And let me show you all the content that's required for creating a new product or a new vehicle. So obviously you're going to type in a title. So the title is the name of your vehicle. So like a Yamaha a 2018 model. And then you can have your description here. After this, we're going to select our vehicle type. So in our case here, it's a motorbike and more specifically a sports bike. And then we're going to scroll down the page, select our manufacturer, so Yamaha. And then as you can see, we have steerings, gearbox, and auto parts. So all these are settings for cars, not for bikes. So we don't need this. So you can untick these. These are not required, not necessary. So let's continue now. So we have to set our product categories as well. So this is a motorbike. And then we can insert a product tag. So we have Mercedes-Benz 2018. So this is maybe not related to the bike. So maybe we're going to put Yamaha 1000 and maybe 1000 cc bike, for instance. So these are tags that people could be looking for and would help you uh, rank in the search results and being found as well on your website. And next we need to insert our product image. So for this, you simply click here on this and you can go and upload a file. And once you have it loaded on your product gallery, you can select the picture itself. And then you insert it. And then you can insert a product gallery as well. So these are additional pictures that you want to showcase. So let me show you the product page. For instance, if you scroll down here, this is our main picture. And these are the additional pictures. So this is our product gallery. So back to our product here. So now we go back up. And from here, we're going to take care of our general settings now. So as you can see, this demo product has a logo uploaded already. But since we set up our global settings with the logo automatically, we've done that in the previous step. Now we can delete this one and the logo will display properly regardless. And we make sure it is the same for the header version. Make sure it is set as global in customizer. And then we have the background header. So basically the background header, let me show you here from the product page, is this image here. So which image do you want to display? So let's delete it and add another one. So let's select this one maybe this time. So I'll use this file and then make sure that you have the footer version set as global in customizer as well. Now let's go down to the nitty gritty of this uh, product, which is the product data section, the car rental feature. So make sure that this is set as car rental, not as a variable product or affiliate product or group product or single product. This is specifically attached to this plugin, which is car rental. And then from here, we will be able to set and configure literally everything related to our rental. So let's configure everything related to money and pricing. So what's the regular price of renting this bike? So per day and per hour. So let's say maybe per hour it's uh, $20 per hour. And per day, so the whole day could be maybe uh, $260, let's say, all together. So which type of rental agreement do you want to offer? Any day, any hour, mixed, so any day and any hour. 
specific period of time, so from 5 a.m. 5 to 10 a.m., or per day, per two days, per month, per six months, per year, or transportation. So in our case here, I think the best solution is probably any day in any hour. So let's select this one here. So do you want to charge a certain amount for the entrance? So maybe you charge $15 per day. And how many of those vehicles, how many of those bikes do you have in store? So let's say maybe you have three of them, in which case you can select them right here. So remember we created the Mercedes E-Class, and you can select this S9999 and maybe S7777. And basically to select multiple vehicles, just hold the control key as you select them. And then do you require a deposit, yes or no? If you say yes, is this a false deposit or is it optional? If it's a false deposit, select yes, otherwise no. And then what type of deposit is it? Is it a percentage of the price or a fixed amount? So it could be a fixed amount. So let's say for this bike, you require at least $50 deposit. And then you can set up a time between two leases. So basically, when someone brings a bike back, how long does it take to run a full inspection and have it ready for the next uh, person, the next customer? So basically, let's say it takes you maybe 30 minutes. And then if you have a video of the bike itself, maybe someone riding it or something very appealing and all that, you might put it here. So this is a YouTube link. And then we can insert features and other features. So let me show you from the product page here. So these are our features here. And these are our other features. So let's go back here. So you can easily add features or just remove them by clicking the X. So feel free to add whatever you think is relevant to this type of product. And then we have the pricing here. So here basically you can set a price by rent duration. So if someone wants to rent it for a five hours duration, for instance, how much would it be? So maybe instead of $20, maybe it is down to $16.50 per hour. This is the price per hour. So instead of paying 20, they book for five hours, five consecutive hours, they will pay only $16.50 per hour. Now, if you book for 10 hours, maybe it goes down to $12.50. So this is more advantageous, obviously. And now you can configure this by day as well. So for instance, the full day, we said it was 260 per one and then day. So this is a special price. Now, let's say this is the normal price that we agreed on. So maybe someone was going to rent it for five days. So 260 times five is normally 1,300. So maybe you have a special deal at 999 for five days. And this become a very interesting offer. So these are called price duration or PD in short. And then we also have special times for ST. So these are slightly different. And you will use this section here to set up special conditions, special offers. So maybe for the whole month of September, you decide to have a reduced rate on special offers, in which case you, see, you can select your startup date. So maybe September 2021 until September, uh, no, October 2021, just like this. And again, you can set up the price per day, per hour, and your special durations here as well. So next we have our resources. As you can see here, if you scroll down the page, it is available here. So these are the extras, basically. And we can set them up right here. So you can see at the moment we have tour and guide day. So maybe you can replace this with something else. Maybe you want to rent as well bike leather suits, in which case you have to give them a specific unique ID. So let's say bike underscore suit. That's it. And then maybe you want to make helmets available as well, in which case you just type here helmets. So again, be sure to make the ID unique and, and use underscore if you have more than one word in, to in between them. And then maybe for those resources, maybe you do them by the day or by total maybe. So to rent a leather suit, maybe, maybe you can add maybe $15 per day or per session. And the helmet may be a fiver, just like this. And maybe you want to provide them with a GoPro camera as well to put on the bike as they're riding. And this could be maybe another $20 per day. And then again, we have the unavailable time. So 
if this bike is not available, maybe it's gone off to the garage for service or something like this, you can set this up here. And then you have to set the minimum time value here. So maybe it's one day or one hour, but maybe your minimum time rental is per two hours. So again, it's really up to you here. And then finally, we have our short description. So this is a short description that will appear on top of the page. And once you've done all this, go back to the top and click update and make sure to save your page. So let's have a quick look at our page. So this is what it used to look like. So if we refresh now, as you can see, we have the price per hour and per day. And everything else basically is roughly the same. You know, the regular price per hour is $20. You can see it's uh, you have a specific discount here for five hours is 1650 per 10 hours is 1250 and so on so basically all the details that we've entered are now available here and if you were to run this between those specific days like we said between october and november you have special discounts and these are the rates so this is our table price by hour and we have the table price by day so the full day is 260 but if you book a full five day session all at once it's only 9.99 and then if we scroll down we have our calendar as you can see we have some bookings already here and then we have a booking form right here so let's take care of our bookings now and let me show you how to manage those bookings so for this if we go to our back end now and we click on manage bookings as you can see, we don't have any bookings at the moment. So let's just create one together. So we're going to select a location. So I'm going to pick this up from San Francisco. We're going to bring it back to San Francisco. We're going to select the date. So let's say maybe Monday at 9 a.m. And we're going to bring it back on Monday, maybe at 12 o'clock. So we just need one. And we're going to get the bike le leather suit as well. And maybe the GoPro camera. And then we click on booking. So this is our cart now, or the review. So basically, we, we're renting this for three hours at $20. We have the bike leather suit and the GoPro camera. And the insurance for the day is $15. So the total would be $110. US And this includes taxes, so 10% tax. So let's proceed to check out and let's book this. So from here, our customers will have to enter their details. Now, as you can see, this looks a bit cramped up and not very clear and not very nice looking, to be honest, you know. So what we are going to do is to remove this section here, the sidebar, and have this as a full width page all together. So we're going to take two seconds now to do this together, and then we're going to come back and refresh the, the checkout page. And for this, we're going to go back to our WordPress dashboard. I'm going to click Pages. And then from here, I'm going to locate the checkout page. And you have to make sure it says checkout page next to it. You might have more than one, but select the one that says checkout page. And then click on the page and open it. And right here, when it says template here, select Elementor Full Width. Select this, click Update. And now we're going to click on Edit with Elementor. And now we're going to save this again. So click on that, click Update. And now it should all be fine. Now if we go back to our checkout page and refresh this page, as you can see, the side column is gone and it's much neater indeed. So let's fill out our details. So just like that, for instance, you can put an order details as well if you wanted to. And then this is our order review. And we're going to select the payment uh, cash on delivery as our payment option for now. And let's click place order. And just like that, we have all the confirmation. So the order has been placed and this has been confirmed. So as you can see, it says, thank you. Your order has been received. And it looks very professional indeed, as you can see as well here on screen. Very, very nice indeed. And now if we go back to our manage booking and refresh the page, you will see that the order is displaying now and that the order status is processing. So let me show you what the confirmation email looks like for the customer. So hi, John, just to let you know, we've received your order and is now being processed. Pay with cash upon delivery. So this was the agreement that to pay with cash upon delivery. But if you selected PayPal, it would say thank you for your payment. 
or something along those lines. We have the details of the order and the billing address just at the bottom. And as you can see, the color red is showing here, which is one of the colors that we selected earlier on when we configured uh, WooCommerce. And at the top corner, you will also receive a confirmation email. So the layout is slightly different. So it says new order and the order number, and it says you've received the following order from John Doe. So you have those details and then the billing address. And again, we have the same color layout here in the header. Now, whoever is going to process this order here from the back end, they might not have access to the emails, etc. So they'd like to know what this order is about and which vehicle has to be uh, ready. So basically, if you click on the order number here, you can display the content of the order. It will open in a new tab. And as you can see, we have the company name, uh, the billing address, and then we have the details here. So you know it's a pickup from San Francisco, drop off San Francisco, the dates, etc and all the amounts. So basically you can access all the details just by clicking on the order ID here, that order number. Now let's have a look at our order again. If we scroll down the page, as you can see, it says this order is no longer editable. So you cannot edit this order as the, at the moment. So if you wanted to make some changes to this order manually afterwards, you can go into the status here and change this on hold. So just like this, and then click update. And once you've done that, if you scroll down the page or even here, you can see you have those small pencils. You can highlight and hover on top, and then you can edit the items. So let's say you wanted to make a few changes to this order here. So click on this, and now you can change all the different amounts and everything immediately from there. And once you're done, click update, and that's it. Now we have different order statuses here, as you can see. So we have completed, processing, on hold, cancel, and close. So use this and change these accordingly during the whole process. So basically, uh, once you've received the order and the bike is ready, maybe you can mark it as completed. And once the customer has come to collect the bike and brought it back, maybe you can uh, mark it as closed or whichever way you prefer. And then you can change the status afterwards and put it back to processing. Click update once more. Then now you're back to normal. Now be aware that each and every time that you are going to manually update an order, once you save that order, your customer is going to receive a confirmation email as well with the updated version of it. So just be aware of that. Now let's say you want to use this system here to run your whole operation directly from here, then you can also take orders over the phone and create a manual booking if you wanted to. So if you wanted to create an order manually, you go into product and then create order. Click on this one here. So of course, we're going to set our status to processing. And then we're going to type in our customer details right here. So just like that, basically. And now we're going to select our product. So let's select the bike. So maybe Yamaha 2018. And our price, as you can see, is 260 per day. So we're going to set up the pickup location, drop-off location, etc. So let's say maybe it's from San Francisco, drop-off San Francisco, select a date. So it would be maybe Monday at 10. And then it bring it back maybe the, the same day, maybe at 3 p.m. We're going to select the vehicle ID. So maybe this time uh, 7777. So it's 15 euro. Is he going to pay a deposit? Maybe you have a, a credit card machine in store and you can take payment over the phone. Otherwise, just leave it like this. And then if you click on view total cost, it will calculate automatically. So we have five hours and the total will be $97.50. And then if your customers agree with that over the phone and it gives you the go ahead, just create the order. And that's it. This is how you create an order manually. Now, once the orders have been entered and received successfully, either by yourself or online, you can go into the calendar booking and you can have a quick overview of the situation. And right here, if you want to check the vehicle you want to track, just select the bike itself. So where is our bike now? Just let me find it here. So I can't see it. So here, Yamaha 2018, and then display calendar. And as you can see, this vehicle, this bike has been booked for those two days at those two time slots. And from the customer's point of view, in the front end, they'll have a quick overview of available dates and time slots. And you can also add some custom fees to your booking form. So you click on this one here, 
custom checkout field and from here I will click plus add field and then you can select among a few options so text, password, email, phone, text area and select so for instance we could add a field that would ask what type of driver's license do you have and give them two options for instance full driver's license or provisional in which case you would select this button here which is select and you would give them the two different options so the first option would be full driver's license you put the id here and then this is what will display on screen and then click plus to add another value so just like that so we have two options now then give it a unique name maybe driver's license insert a label so that's basically the title that will display in the front end and is this required or not yes i suppose it is and then click save and once saved, you can see it is added to our special fields, custom fields. And then if we go into front end now and scroll down in the booking form, and you can see now we have an added field here that says driver's license type. Is it full driver's license or provisional driver's license? And the same applies with our request for booking. This form here, as you can see, we also have an added field here for the driver's license type. And you can select among two different options. And that's it basically for all the technical side. So now we can take care of the layout and finishing up how our website looks like. So we're going to take care of our menu section here because you can see it's a bit messy at the moment. So we're going to make sure all these tabs are properly uh, defined and designed. So we're going to take care of this. And then we're going to take care of our home page as well. And all the internal pages. I'm going to show you how to finish up all these different layouts and change all this content here. And for this, once more, we go back to our WordPress dashboard. We go to all pages and you locate home page. So as you can see, you have all these different pages. So we're going to clean that up at the end of our tutorial. I'm going to show you how to get rid of all the unnecessary pages. So this is our home page. And this time we're going to edit with Elementor. So click on this link here. So click on that. And now this is Elementor. So basically, this is where you can edit your page and change all these different elements so how do we go about this so basically every time you hover on top you can see we you have that uh, blue frame all around it so how does elementor work it's very simple it's made out of sections so if i click on this you can see this is a section each section is made out of different columns as you can see this is the column and each, each column sorry is composed of different elements so this one is an element called service and if I scroll down the page, you can see this one, for instance, is called Skill. And this one here is called Heading 1. So basically, each of these elements, you can change them and tweak them around using this section here on the left-hand side in the menu section. So let's go ahead with this. So let's go first with this section here. So we click on this here. So basically, you have the title here that you can change. So it says Motor Support at the moment. But maybe you want to put 24-7 support. And then you can see you can link back to a page. So let's say you wanted to link back to your contact page. So let's open our contact page from here. And as you can see, this is the address to the contact page. So you highlight this, control C, and you paste it here instead of this one. And as you can see, if you hover on top of this title, it will change and it will turn into a hyperlink. And where do you want to open this? In the same window or in a new window? So ideally, I suppose, probably in the same window. And this is the icon here, so flat icon diamond. So you could change this to a different one. Maybe you want something that looks more like a phone or maybe a clock. So maybe this one would be better for this because it's 24-7. So let's go ahead with this. So maybe you could have this one instead. So we copy this, go back here, paste it here. And now we have a clock that makes more sense with this uh, text here in the content. And then feel free to change the text here as well. So just highlight this and type your own content. So maybe something along those lines. We offer 24-7 round-the-clock customer service. If you're stuck anywhere with one of our vehicles, simply contact us. So basically, you'd want to build trust here. You know, when people land on your website, why should they trust you over anyone else? So give them three compelling reasons here why they should do so and you can link back to any internal pages on your website and then let's scroll down the page so we have this section here so as you can see we have a picture in the background so if you wanted to change the picture click on this section here 
we go into style and you can see we have the background picture so you can change the picture again with your own picture so basically let's select maybe this one for now i'm just going to go take, take this one here so insert media and as you can see we have a different background color now now maybe it is a little bit too dark as you can see so you go into background overlay and then you can change the color because at the moment it's the opacity is set to 0 0.76 so you can increase that or reduce it but maybe you want to change the color altogether maybe you want it to be more on the green side maybe like this a brighter green maybe altogether so there you go and you can change the feel and the look of your website just using those two simple options here and then for the content itself from this section here we have four columns so maybe you don't need four of them columns maybe you don't want to display only three of them so how can you change this well very simply just click on any of them and delete the column itself so right click on it and then delete and as you can see now they're evenly distributed in three different columns now how do you change the content click on it and as you can see we have the number so this is our number on top the content what it refers to so new motor for sale and the speed time in milliseconds so this is milliseconds so 1000 milliseconds is a second so how long does it take to go from zero and to go to the full count of 2,545? So yeah, and then you can choose among two different sizes. So we have white, which is the one we have at the moment, and you have dark as well. So we, this will be black. So depending on the background that you have here, if it's a bright color, you might select a darker shade here because it will contrast better with the picture in the background. Or white if your background is darker. And then if we keep scrolling down, we have all our bikes available for rental. So this is a title here. If you click on it, you can see rented for you. And then what kind of motor do you want? So you can change this and tweak this around, you know, based on, on your own preferences. And this section here, so let me click on this. So basically here with this section, you are displaying all the bikes available for rental, which is very nice. But how do you define which products you're going to di uh, display, which vehicles? And you can see that the content is pulled from those categories here. It says motor. So where do you find these? So very simply, if you go here, if you go back to your product categories that we created earlier, if you scroll down, you have motorbikes, which is the one we're displaying at the moment. This is our slugs that says motors. So basically, this element here is what you're going to paste here, and this is what it will display. And then you can filter by for renting, for sale, or both. So in our case, it's probably better to have it for renting. You can define in which order you want to show them. So you have custom order by ID, total sale, rating, price per day, price per hour. So this, again, uh, it's up to you really to select which uh, one you prefer. So let's keep custom order for now. And you can select if it's ascending or descending. And then how many of them do you want to display? So if you read this carefully, it says total items in each category six. So you can see here it's only displaying four, but if you scroll down, you can display six. So if, you, if, I, if I use the slider here, it will display and reveal another two. So it's six all together on the home page, but laid out in two rows of two bikes. Now, as you've seen, if you want to go from one page to the other, you have to use these buttons to make them slide. Now you can use the auto slide feature. So at the moment it's false. But if you put a value, so maybe I'm going to put that in milliseconds, so maybe 2,000, every two seconds it will slide automatically from one to the other. And then we have a product settings here, so we can select among a few different styles. So if you select style 1, it will look like this. If you select style 2, it will look slightly different, as you can see. We have style 3, I think that's the one we had already, yeah. And then it's style 4 as well. So again, it's really up to you to select whichever you prefer. So let's go back to style 3. And then you can decide how many columns you want to display. So we have two at the moment. So maybe three, just like this. And you can go right up to four. So if you select four, obviously you have to increase the amount of uh, products you want to display here. Total items you need. So you might, you might have to change this to eight or maybe 12. So let's go back to two at the moment. And then you can decide how many items per column. So at the moment we have two, as you can see, one, two per column, but you can increase that as well. And if we hover on top of our images, you can see it says rented, which is basically this text here, and you can tweak this around as well.
and then you have a few more options here but feel free to play around they're, pre they're pretty much uh, self-explanatory these ones you know so let's carry on with the rest of our page so if we scroll down so at the moment this section is called news and updates so basically this will pull all the blog posts that we have on our website so if you go back to our wordpress dashboard go to the post section you can see all these are basically the items displayed in the uh, in this section here so maybe you want to make use of this section to display maybe tips or latest advice or latest news whichever in which case you can create posts here you can delete this one and create new one and any of these will be displayed automatically in this section here so let me show you how you can edit a blog post so let's find this one for instance drive a motorbike by yourself so if you go back here uh, drive a motorbike by yourself this one so just click on the title and then click on this button here back to wordpress editor and click continue and this is the content of our blog post so the blog post basically see this as an article so basically type all the content here and the featured image this one here is basically the one that will display here in this element so next we have this section here so you can have you can find out very quickly which vehicles and bikes are available so we have a simple form here with the pickup location pickup date and drop off date and you can find out immediately so you can tweak this around as well so let's click on this and as you can see this is a uh, short code basically so as you can see here this is a little bit more technical so i will link the documentation related to this in the comment section below but as you can see it's pretty uh, straightforward as well as you can see all the different elements are either false or true so basically if you have a read through this you will quickly understand that these are the, just the elements as we are using them in the form but do you want to show them or don't want to show them are they required or not required but again i'm going to link the full documentation related to those short calls so we can have a look into that and this will be linked in the description below and then now we have all the social proofs like testimonials for instance and the trust building items so as you can see here you can change these around very simply so these are text items very simple to change so this is our title here as you can see you can change this you can change this content you can do this with these three different elements and for our testimonials is about the same as well and for our testimonial elements you can see we have two of them here two testimonials and you can always add another one or duplicate this one if you wanted to add more very simply like this or delete some so let's create maybe three of them so if you open this you can see this one is called tony chester and he, that's the testimonial to take the content and this is his picture and then we can have this one here so maybe this one is joe blog for instance and this one would be john doe so let's call him this one john doe and now if we scroll in between those different uh, testimonials you will see now we have joe blog and then we have john doe so this is how easy it is to actually tweak this around and then you can define how many of them you want to be visible at a time on desktop ipad and mobile so probably one is probably the best value but you can tweak this around again and then you want this to auto slide or not so again it's the same if it's false you'll have to click on these dots to go from one to the other and if it's automatically like we have in auto slider you can define the duration in milliseconds so 3000 milliseconds is three seconds so every three seconds you will display a new one and then if you enable the shop as well you can have all those items displayed here from your woocommerce section so all of this is really up to you you don't have to now if there are any sections that you don't want you can just delete them all together so for this just hover on the section itself click the x delete do the same for this one do the same for this one and maybe this is a cleaner look for you for what you want to do and as always when you finish don't forget to click update there you go now it is saved so let's have a quick look at our page now that everything has been changed and uh, customized so we have a slider you can see the bike inventory our three boxes here we have a new color with only three sections we have our rentals followed by our blog section and then we have a quick find uh, form our testimonials as you can see we have three people now your blog and john doe and then we have a footer section so let's take care of this now let's change our footer section and for this we go back to our wordpress dashboard we go into appearance widgets 
As you can see, these are all the widgets used on the website. And we have a section here that's called footer. So all these are the ones we're going to change basically to tweak our footer section here. So you can see we have that green section here on top. So this one is the footer info. So if you click on this, this is a custom HTML uh, section. So open this. And as you can see, these are short codes again. So we can change some of the content here ourselves to fit our own requirements. So as you can see, the address here, Rock Street 12. So this is basically the address here. So you can change this in between those air quotes. So type your address right here. And you can add the Google Maps location as well. So how can you find your location? Very simply. So I went on Google Maps. I was looking for San Francisco Fish and Chips. So let's say this is your location here. If you right click on it, you can see those uh, values here. So if you click on that, it is copied. And now if you go back in this section here, now you can change those values. So you're going to highlight this. This is the first set. Paste your own. And then you're going to do the same for this one here. So select this and paste your own. And then click Save. And then you can do the same for the mobile phone. As you can see, this is your number here right there so instead of plus one eight eight nine nine three 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 type in your number here so basically this one here it will automatically ring your phone number if someone clicks on it from a mobile phone so if someone wants to click tap on this sorry uh, on the mobile phone it will automatically bring the uh, phone up and it will start ringing whereas this one here is the one that's displayed in the front end so basically these should be the same numbers you know but this is the actual number that they should ring and this is the one that we want to display. So, as you can see, this is the one displayed. And this is the one that you're ringing. So, normally, this should be the same anyways. You know, there's no reason why this would be different. And then we have this section here. So, these are your email address. And again, instead of over theme at gmail.com, just put in your email address here. And don't forget to put it twice just for the link and as well for the text. So, that's that for the green section here. Now, let's look at our contact details here. And for this, we're going to close this section. We're going to the next one. So this one is called footer column one. So we have column one, two, three, four, because we have four columns, as you can see here. So column one, let's take care of this one, open this. And again, this is the HTML uh, section. And we are going to do the same again here. So basically between those air quotes, put in your address, paste in here your location details. So those ones we got from Google Maps, so these ones basically. So paste them here and here as well. So paste them in twice. And the same with your mobile number, your phone number, sorry. So the number that you should ring and the, the number that they see in the front end. And then do the same with your email address once more right here. And then if you want them to be able to click on this link immediately to find you on Google Maps, basically use this section here. And again, put your details here. So those ones we found from this uh, location here, just paste them here again instead of the actual ones. So basically this section here and this section here. And if you want to change the text here, find us on map. Maybe you want to say find us on Google Maps. And you can change this easy like this and then click save when you're finished. So now next we go to the next one. So we have column two, which is basically this one here. So let's open this. Open two. So this is the blog section. So this will automatically fetch a blog post. And as you can see, we have three of them. One, two, three. And as you can see, this is the number here, three. So you have different options as well here. So feel free to use uh, these based on your own personal requirements. And you can basically uh, customize that your own way. So we can close this now. So we go back to our next section. So let's go to column four because this is a menu. So I'm going to show you this one here along with our menu section here. So let's take care of this one for now. So we have the working hours. So this is column four. And again, this is a HTML section. So let's have a quick look in the front end. So you have the, for the sale departments, service departments, and then Monday to Friday, eight to six, Saturday and Sunday closed. But maybe you don't have the same opening hours, or maybe you don't have a sales department and service department. You only have sales department. So let me show you how you can do this. So if you only have a sales department, you can just highlight this one here, this section, delete it. And if you have both, you can keep them both. And then to edit this, basically, again, is between those uh, quotes, basically, you know. So you go and change this text here. So instead of Monday to Friday, 8 to 6, 
maybe you want to put 8 p.m. Uh, 8 a.m. Sorry, until to 6 p.m. or something like this. Don't forget to save. So we can close this now, and then we have the footer social, which is basically this section here with all the social media icons here and buttons. So I'll click on this. And then we're going to open that. And as you can see, we, this is again um, a HTML shortcode section. So at the moment, we have Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google Plus, and RSS feed. So I don't think anyone is using RSS feed anymore. anymore. Uh, neither Google Plus, I think that it doesn't exist anymore. So we can get rid of those two. So basically, from here, you can select those two. Non, don't delete the last element. This you have to keep. It's just these two here. So we'll delete that. Because Google Plus and RSS feed don't need it, and now we have we are left with Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And then basically here, instead of those hashtags, this is where you're going to put the link to your page. So you're going to link this to your Facebook account, your Twitter account, your YouTube account. And then when you're happy enough, click save. And then if we have a quick look now, as you can see, we only have three social media. But maybe you wanted to add another one. Maybe you want Instagram as well or LinkedIn, whichever, you know. So how can you add another one? So let's say you wanted to add Instagram and you want it to be in red as well, like this one. So let's do this. So basically, you highlight this one. This is the red one. And then you can paste it. And now instead of YouTube, you call this one Instagram. And now we, oh, Instagram. And then we can save. And maybe you want Instagram to be next to your Facebook account, so you can control X, add a line here, control V, then you can insert it, then you move this line, and then you can save it. And now if we have a look, as you can see, we now have Instagram next to our Facebook link just right here in the footer section. Now let me show you how to change the content of this section here. So this is basically a menu section. As you can see, we have five different links. So I'm going to show you how to change this and how to change the top menu as well at the same time. So let me show you first this widget here in the back end. So this one is column three, navigation menu, and this one is called useful links. So let's go into our menu sections. So for this, we're gonna go into appearance and we're gonna click on menus, leave, yes. And we have all our different menus here. So we have a primary menu and then the useful links. So the useful links basically is our menu section here, this one. And then after you've clicked on the menu itself, click select to display the content. As you can see now with our partner, career, sitemap, investors, a request a quote, which is identical to what we have here. So if you wanted to change those items around very simply, I'm going to show you how you can do that. And then on our left hand side here are all the elements you can add to your menu. So we have pages, posts, custom links, and even categories if you wanted to. So let's say you wanted to add the contact page right here. So you can click on view all and you can scroll through all the pages until you find it. And if you have too many pages, you can find it. You can use the search box as well. So if you keep typing contact, as you can see, we can find it easily here. So this is our contact page. So take this, add to menu. And now our contact page has been added to our menu section. Now let's say you wanted to reorganize them. You can simply drag and drop them. So you can put this one first and then click save as always. And then you can do the same with blog posts. As you can see, with all the different blog posts. So if you wanted to add a blog post, simply click on it, add it. And then again, you can reorganize it the way you want, just like that. You can create a custom link. So you can uh, paste the link here and put a title and you can even add categories if you wanted to as you can see we've created a few categories so if you wanted to show all the motorbikes you can add that to menu as well so just like this and let's say you only wanted those three here and want to get rid of all of them how can you do that very simply click on this remove and do the same with the other items or basically just like that and then click save and now we have our new footer menu and if you go have a look, as you can see, this is exactly the same. And the same principle applies for the main menu here. So let me show you how you can tweak this around. So now we go back here, we select our primary menu, click select. And as you can see, these are all our elements. So there are way too many of them. As you can see, this is just all the demo content. So if you wanted just to delete a few, simply again, as I said, select the item and then remove. And you can do the same with all the different items. 
and then you'll end up with a much simpler and concise menu like this one. So if we go back to our home page and have a look, it will look like this. So all we need basically is home, about, bike rental, service and contact, which is maybe just sufficient. So if we click on the other pages here, so let's click on about maybe. As you can see, this is a different page and this you can tweak around as well. So how can you change this content? Again, the same as our home page, you go into pages, uh, hover on top of about, edit with Elementor. And then from here, again, the same principle as before. You can just hover on top, select the items, and then you can change them. You can change your text and do the same with the whole rest of the page. And you can do the same with all your different pages here, by rental services and contact. And I'm just going to show you how to change the contact page and the contact form now. And for this, we go back to our pages here. We have the contact page with this, this one. Edit with Elementor. There you go. So now we can change our details here. So if you just click on this, as you can see, you can change our title, our hours, and the opening days. So if you scroll down the page, as you can see, we have a form here. So this form, where is this form located? So let me click on this. And as you can see, this is using the Contact Form 7 plugin. So this is another plugin installed on WordPress, and this is why we're using a short code. So where can you change the content of this form? So let me show you very quickly. So as you can see, our contact form ID is number five. So if we go back to our WordPress dashboard, we're going to contact. And now it is displaying a few different contact forms. And as you can see, this one has the ID five, which is the exact same as the one we have here. So this is the one we need to edit. So click on it. And as you can see here, this is the content of our form. So you have the name, the email address, the subject and the message, which is exactly what, like we have it here. Now you can add to it if you wanted to. So if you wanted to add something maybe here, so what you can do basically is to select this one, copy and paste it. And now you're going to highlight this and delete that. And then you can add a different field. So maybe you want to ask for the telephone number. So click on this and then you can just insert it just like that. And now we have a new field. So let's add a place all the section just like this. So I copy this, paste it here. And we're going to call this instead of your subject. Let's call this phone number. Now we can save this. There you go, it is saved now, and if we go and have a quick look, as you can see, now we have your name, email address, your subject, and phone number right here. So this is how you can add and tweak things around. And then back to a contact form, as you can see, we have a warning sign here, so click on this. And from here, you need to insert an email address that belongs to your domain name. So our domain name is mrwebreviews.com, and the email address that we created was info at, so we're going to put here info at, mrwebreviews.com and as you can see now it is fine you have no more warnings anymore and just make sure that you put your email address right here so info at mrwebreviews.com because this is the email where you're going to receive all your inquiries and once you're done click save and that's just done for the contact form and then back to our contact page if you scroll down the last section is google maps so if we click on this as you can see, we have to insert an API key. So we can use the exact same API key that we had created before. So if we go back to our Google Maps API here and go to credentials, and then you come, can copy your API key right here, just copy it. And then back to our contact page, click on this link here that says integration settings. And right here, paste it and click save. And that's it. We're all done now. So back to our page. So from here, you can zoom in or zoom out. So depending on your own preferences. So you can select this. And once you're happy, click update. So there you go, guys. This is how you can build a bike rental website from scratch. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please consider giving me a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful indeed. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.